So in this video, we're going to be discussing iOS 18 settings to turn off now. These are extremely urgent and very important, especially if you're using the latest iOS 18.1 in order to save your battery life as well as improve your iPhone's longevity and enhance the performance. So with that being said, the first setting that you need to turn off is something called optimized battery charging. If you go ahead and open up your settings, I'm going to explain what I mean in a bit right there. And then from the battery, what you're going to do is you're going to go to charging. And then over here, make sure you turn off optimized battery charging because now on the iOS 18, on the newer iPhone models, now we have something called charge limit because Apple's previous functionality, this feature was not efficient. So they came up with this charge limit where you can literally set a charge limit and it won't charge above that amount. Since your iPhone has lithium ion battery, the nature of such batteries is that it does not like to stay at high percentage, meaning full charge because it reduces its longevity. So that's why Apple gave you this option to set a charge limit, I would recommend you to put anywhere from 90% or lower. I personally have set mine to 80%. Even with the 80% battery life, I'm doing just fine. I'm just basically going through the day without needing to recharge again. At night, I just put it into charge and it's gonna charge up to 80% and that's it, we're good to go. It's gonna improve my overall battery life and longevity of my device. So this is the first setting, but the second setting that you need to turn off is something called communication preferences. In order to access this, what you're gonna do is again, open up your settings and then go to your name. And then from here, you're gonna click on personal information. And when you open up your personal information, you're gonna go to communication preferences. So these are the three things that you, you want to turn off. The reason being is like, it's gonna reduce your emails, it's gonna reduce all of these unnecessary communications from Apple, and just overall improve your battery life because they're not all the time sending you stuff and just you know piling up your email. So you're gonna go ahead and turn off all of them. We don't need these newsletters just unnecessary stuff, I turn them all off. The next up is the, I would recommend you to go ahead and open up your settings, go to your name again, and click on your subscription and make sure you check your subscription. And if you have any unnecessary subscription, I would highly suggest you to turn it off. For example, here, these are all of the inactive ones that I've already turned off. After that, guys, next thing that you need to turn off is within the cellular, this is something called 5G standalone. If you open up your settings again, go to your cellular data and then click on your number right here, find a voice and data. So if you click on voice and data for, for those of you who has 5G standalone available, make sure you turn this off and just select a 5G auto. It means 5G auto uses basically 5G only when needed for performance while optimizing the battery life. So it's gonna, again, improve your battery life. It's not gonna drain your battery. This is the best option to select within the voice and data. While we're in the cellular data, next thing that you need to do is you need to go ahead and select data mode and then make sure you turn off allow more data on 5G. Instead, switch to low data mode. It doesn't reduce your speed in any way. What it does is that right here, when you have low da data mode, it helps you reduce cellular data usage by pausing automatic updates and background tasks. And when you when you get back home with the Wi-Fi, it's gonna continue doing all that background uh, stuff when it is necessary. So it's not gonna reduce your cellular data speed. It's just gonna reduce how much amount it uses. So it's a really good setting. This is what I like to set, it, set my personally, my cellular data. Besides that, in order to save your battery and your cellular data, if you go ahead, go back to your cellular data again, and then scroll down where it says iCloud Drive and iCloud Backup. These are the two things I would highly recommend you to turn it off. We don't wanna upload our stuff to iCloud or the drive with the cellular. We can do that with Wi-Fi when we get home. Another thing, if you go back to your settings again and open up your Wi-Fi, and then just wait a minute, scroll down right here to ask to join networks. This is basically networks automatically joining. You don't want this to happen. So what I like you to do is I like you to turn this off completely because you can just manually connect to them instead of being just randomly connecting to some random Wi-Fi outside. Maybe you go out to coffee shop and it's just instead of connecting to the Wi-Fi of that specific coffee shop, it might connect to some you know random Wi-Fi that person is hosting or something like this. So this is just safe to just turn this off and manually come here and check the Wi-Fi that are available. It's just gonna improve your battery life as well as your uh, security and privacy. So I highly recommend you guys to do that. Next up, if you go ahead, go to your settings again, all the way down, if you scroll down to your app store, right here, as you guys can see, we have a few things that we have to turn off within app store. First of them being app downloads. 
So when, when this is on, what it's, what it's going to do is when you download something on your iPhone, if you have the same iCloud on your iPad, let's say, it's going to download the same app on your iPad as well, which I think is unnecessary. I don't want to I don't want the same app necessarily every time on my iPad device as well. So I like to turn this off, just saves you peace of mind and unnecessary stuff. And if you go to your video outplay right here, just turn this off because it's not gonna just randomly play some videos of the app in the app store. It's gonna save you again battery life. It's not gonna load the videos. Next thing is in-app ratings and reviews. You may want to turn this off as well because if you're like me, I don't like to get bothered by random pop-ups as soon as I download an app saying, give us a five-star review. Are you enjoying this app? I don't like that stuff. I like to turn this off because I don't want to be bothered by them. I don't want to be forced into giving a review. Instead, if I really love the app, I can just leave a review myself or vice versa. So this is something that I would turn off as well. Next up, if you go to your settings again, go to your notifications right here and then scroll down where it says screen sharing. If you go ahead, open this up, allow notification. I would highly suggest you to turn this off because sometimes you get personal messages while you're screen recording, while you're trying to share some type of video with, let's say your followers or if you want to put it on your story, Instagram story, something like this. If you turn this off, you're not going to get notifications while you're screen recording, which is, I think, the best way to do. So that's why I highly suggest you guys to turn it off as well. So you don't get embarrassed or something like this when you get a message or, or some personal data. But moving forward, guys, next up in these settings, we're going to go ahead and open up our display and brightness. We're going to turn off basically show a wallpaper. If you scroll down, we have always on display. So if you do have a device, if you have iPhone uh, models that supports always on display, basically what it does is that when you lock your device, you will still see your, your time, your notifications, and your wallpaper. So this is the only thing that I don't like. I don't like to see my wallpaper because when it's dark, uh, wallpaper is not even showing properly and it's just like eats up a little bit more. Whereas if you turn it off, it's gonna be just dark screen, just like this one. Next up, we're going to go ahead and go to settings and then privacy and security. If you go ahead and scroll down to your privacy and security, click on it. From here, we want to right away go to tracking and turn off allow apps to request to track. We don't want to be bothered again by these apps asking us to just basically confirm for them to track us while we're just browsing on the Internet, while we even exit their app. They're going to constantly track us to get data about us, to get cookies about us, to sell our data to advertisers. So we don't want that at all. Just turn this off to have peace of mind and more privacy. Next up, if you just scroll all the way down right here, analytics and improvements, I would highly suggest you to right away turn on, turn off all of this because I think Apple can do a good job improving their products without our data being shared with them necessarily. So just turn all of this off. When these are off, your iPhone is not sending back and forth all of your information to Apple and by result, saving your battery life and just improving your performance and your peace of mind. So I highly suggest you to turn off all of this. Next thing that you want to turn off is Apple intelligence. If you do have Apple intelligence, what it does is that it, you know, over time collects data about you and sends to Apple because still it's still, still in beta. And if you want to just opt out from that, I would highly suggest you to turn off reporting. So it will, it's going to basically stop re reporting your information to Apple. So I highly suggest you to turn off that as well. But next up, next up is Apple advertising right here. If you click on this, turn off personalized ads, because what it does is that again, it's going to collect your data and then try to give you a personalized ads. We don't want to be basically bothered with that and sell, sell ourselves as the product. So just turn this off and just improve your privacy go ahead and scroll up again from your privacy and security go to location services i highly suggest you guys to just go through all of these different apps that you have and then turn off that says always if you have something that says always you may want to just turn this off for example this one if it's set to always what it's going to do is that it's going to be able to identify your location wherever you are even if you turn off your app even if you turn off your device like this, it's in your pocket, it's in your home, it's going to be able to know it. Whereas if you just set to while sharing, you're going to have a peace of mind because they won't be able to track your location. Only they can track when you are using the app. So this is the best setting to set to. Just go over this apps and turn off anything that says always switch to while using the app. Next up, while we're still here, we're going to scroll all the way down our regular routine checkup. We're going to go to system services. And then scroll down right here. They're very, very sneaky. After every update, you might get these product improvement turned on. Again, this is analytics, your data being sent to Apple to improve their stuff. And I think Apple can do a good job 
themselves without your data being sent and just not draining your battery in the results. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off these three options as well. Another thing that you may want to turn off is significant locations. You do need to scan your face ID in order to uh, open this and significant location. What it is, is that it's going to collect data about your locations that you visited in the past, the past history. And you're going to have a rec record here. This is, to be honest for me, it's a little bit creepy. I don't like why they collect our location, especially our significant locations. That's why I just turn this off and have again, better privacy and better peace of mind. And as a result, not drain your battery and improve the longevity of your device. Next thing is going to be the search. If you go ahead and open up your settings and go to search right here, and then right there, help Apple improve search. Go ahead and turn this off. Basically, what it's doing is that everything that you search for, Apple will be able to able, able to collect that data and send to Apple to improve their search. So just turn this off. No need to send your data to Apple. And again, it's kind of eat up your battery. And as a bonus, I'm going to give you the last and but not least, this is going to be kind of a big one because background app refresh is a major thing. If you go ahead, open up your general and go to your just scroll down to background app refresh. This is a big topic. It's going to basically load stuff in the background while if, even if you're not using the app. So I personally don't see any necessity why why apps should be able to refresh the app in the background without uh, me using the app. So just go ahead and open up your background app refresh and turn off all of them, especially don't set to cellular. If you want to do Wi-Fi, that's I accept that, but don't set to cellular because it's going to drain your cellular data. My personal preference is turning them off completely because I don't want them to just constantly refresh in the background and eat my battery and drain my battery. So just turn this off. I'm fine with data being loaded after I open the app. So this is just, I think, the most optimized way to go about it. But nonetheless, these are 20 plus settings to turn off on iOS 18. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys leave me a big thumbs up because it really helps the channel out to reach more people. And also subscribe down below for more useful videos just like this one weekly. And check out these videos in the meantime. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys next video. Peace out.